Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Crispin Mong. I'm the CISO, Data Protection Officer and VP of Compliance here at Rapid API. And uh, welcome to this short 10, 15 minute presentation around API strategies and really privacy and security. Uh, for those of attending online, uh, thank you very much for attending. Also, I wanted to let you know that a link will be sent out later on that actually links to the recording of this presentation. Over the next 10 minutes, I really wanted to talk about API management strategy in the context of uh, a CISO's perspective. And we'll touch on security and privacy and some of the issues that uh, uh, are concerning to a CISO. And then also really summarizing in terms of what organizations should really be thinking about in regards to security and privacy in the context of some sort of hub that manages APIs. Okay, so within any organization, I think uh, in, in, in the modern world now, we're, we really have to deliver more value to our customers, new ways of interfacing with our customers. And there's a lot of pressure on the engineering community within those organizations to develop new functionality, to deploy that new functionality, uh, to deploy new services, to try and attract uh, and make our services more uh, not approachable, but more meaningful to our customer base. And the faster we can do that, the faster we go to market with new services and new products and a lot of organizations really means that we get first mover advantage. So there's a lot of pressure to deliver on the engineering teams internally to deliver capability, to leverage resources they already have within the organization and to kind of extend our ability to communicate more effectively with our customer base. So the huge amount of pressure, once again, for our engineering, engineering teams to deliver capabilities. <clears throat> so I think we always come up against this or start to hit upon this notion of uh, competing kind of objectives. The business wants to drive more business revenue through different product lines, different features, different service features. And our developer community wants to meet that challenge by really delivering great solutions that enable customers to interact with us more effectively as a business and really to meet the demands from the, the, the executive level in terms of driving the business forward. All right. We want to maximize internal uses, internal uses of resources, and we want to do this at the minimum cost um, in terms of, you know, to, to drive, you know, profitability and those types of things within the business. So there's always kind of competing, um, charters within the organization, obviously, once again, recapping, the senior management want to drive greater profitability. And we, as the engineering team, have to kind of be able to support that and deliver the solutions that they really want. Over the years, we've kind of observed a number of things bubbling up, especially with cloud computing services. Uh, and from a CISO perspective, this is, this is, this is what's really kind of uh, forcing us to pay attention to how applications have been developed and how quickly they're being developed and what tooling and technology is or are our developer community kind of using. A great example would be in the mid 2000s when Salesforce started to really you know, put the metal to the, to, to the ground in, in regards to selling the services. They primarily sold to the sales guys. And from a security perspective, we weren't too concerned at that time um, around that, but obviously when we became aware of the types of data and information that was being pushed into the cloud, that became problematic for us because we didn't understand or know what the security profile was of those organizations that were actually now holding our data and processing our data and information. So for us, from a CISO perspective, uh, and even a data protection officer perspective, it becomes problematic because we now don't know our environment. All right. We have now shadow IT working within the business and we have no control over the services and technology that, you know, in, in that particular case, the sales guys were using, but also now within in the engineering environment, the engineering tools that people are now using. I think that's one of the challenges that we see with engineers being tasked with developing new functionality in the most quick in, in the quickest and most effective way they can. And a lot of them are actually now leveraging APIs to help them build applications much faster and to, to deliver solutions to the management teams in the way they want them, at a, at a speed that they want them to be delivered at, all right? 
The problem is, is that there are so many services out there that they're leveraging. And from a security perspective, we sometimes lose sight of what services they are, and therefore shadow IT starts to bubble to the top of the agenda for us from a CISO perspective. And we need to understand how we want to manage and control that without limiting or disabling the engineering teams from being as innovative as they can be. So one of the reasons why we're interested in this is particularly from an API perspective is that within the, 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 the structure of an API, and I use that term loosely, you know, we've got certain things, okay? We have the headers, okay? We have the body primarily in the API as well. And to a large extent, a lot of that data and information can be considered as personal identifiable information potentially. Uh, regulated data information may be passing into the body or through the body, and we have no control over API, the, the what data types are moving through the APIs because really the developer community is determining that, all right? So from a, a CISO perspective, that becomes difficult to manage and control, but also we may not truly be aware of what's happening with data, how data is traversing through the organization, where it is, is it being stored appropriately, et cetera, et cetera. So it becomes a challenging thing that CISOs need to kind of be able to get their hands around and understand what's happening to the data in the context of API usage. So I said it'd be problematic. It is problematic, but from a security perspective, okay, um, if we've hardened our entire infrastructure where all our APIs sit and the services that we use, we own all of those things, and we're confident that we have the right security controls and frameworks in place, then there's a level of confidence to say, yes, this data is secured, all right? We then start to unpack some of this discussion and, and start to think about, well, data privacy issues. How do we know that data is being used appropriately by the different business functions within the organization? And... How do we know where it's even stored, okay? Where is it being processed? Those become sub questions that we need to answer from a, an information security and data privacy perspective in the event that a customer asks us, but also in the event that a regulator may ask us as well. Do we understand the entirety of the data within the business, where it is, who's using it, how is it being consumed, where is it stored? From a security perspective, as I said, and I touched upon earlier, is that if we own that entirety then uh, of our infrastructure where all of the APIs sit and all our systems and resources sit, then to a large extent from a security perspective, if we've got a strong enough and a robust enough framework of controls, we can say with a level of confidence that this data is secured, okay? The knock-on question or the additive question to that is the data usage question, data transformation types of questions that we may be asked by other regulators or even our customers. Things start to get out of control um, when we start to kind of leverage external APIs and partners, suppliers, and other third parties that may be providing APIs to us and we may be interfacing with uh, from, a, from, from our internal processes. Because from a CISO perspective, that then expands my scope of responsibility into areas that I don't have a good understanding um, about the in, in terms of the security controls that an organization or a third party may have in place. Um, and therefore that becomes problematic once again, in the sense that now I've gone from this known um, uh, IT boundary, for want of a better phrase, in terms of things I know about, because everything's internal, to this external kind of um, add-on to it for in terms of external suppliers, third parties, and their security controls and features that they may have. And then I still have a responsibility from the data control or data owner perspective to know these things, but it becomes problematic, as I said, when engineering teams start to leverage third parties, because I may or may not have some connection to, or business connection, sorry, to those third parties to understand what their security or data, data, data protection kind of profile looks like. So it becomes difficult for me to be able to answer customer questions around data movement, data security. It becomes very difficult for me to answer those same questions from a data regulator in regards to how do I know where my data is moving that I own, that my customer, that's my customer data that I have the responsibility for. How do I know where it's been transferred and used 
when we start to extend the scope of IT infrastructure to include third parties and suppliers and external APIs that might be provided by other organizations that we want to actually interface with. So from a business perspective, when we have an API first strategy and we kind of open the door to allow third parties to be leveraged as well, which is totally normal from an engineering perspective, there's nothing wrong with that. From an information security perspective, it becomes problematic for me as a CISO and data protection officer because I now have an expanding surface area. The engineers are, are, are driving to their charter to develop you know, greater functionality, leverage the resources we have internally, leverage additional resources out there from third parties and suppliers to develop innovative solutions to kind of fulfill a business demand in some way, shape or form. The problem for me, once again, as I mentioned, is that I've got this expanding surface area that I have no real knowledge about or may not have knowledge about, and I may end up with rampant data privacy issues in terms of cross-border transfer of data information, inappropriate use of data. I may have excessive data exposure into different regions because you know an API has been used to post data to a data center or to a, a, a database in some third party, but I have no idea of the controls there. It may be residing in an inappropriate location for that data type. Uh, and that becomes problematic for us as a, as, as a CISO and a data protection officer because we need to have control over it. We need to show oversight and management of it. But also, are we moving that data and information kind of through the appropriate legal mechanisms that we should have in place? Like, for example, I should actually have, as a CISO, certain agreements in place with third parties if I'm moving data to third parties, okay? Um, but as a developer... I'm not really too concerned about that. I just want to develop functionality and use resources. But from a business perspective and from a security and data privacy perspective, my objective is to make sure that everything kind of happens in a way that's meant to happen and that legally and underneath that the data is moving appropriately. So to a large extent, in some implementations or some organizations that we actually see, we see what's happening on the left-hand side of the screen an uncontrolled API ecosystem where internal APIs have not been categorized. So no one really knows what type of data is moving through those APIs or being consumed by the resources being consumed by those APIs. Uh, we don't know whether the code in the APIs has been developed uh, appropriately, whether security flaws in those code and that code, but also as it extends and developers start to use external and leverage external APIs and external APIs from third parties, et cetera, then I actually end up with an uncontrolled a API ecosystem, which is very difficult to kind of defend in the event that the customer comes knocking on the door and say, hey, what are you doing with our data and information? And the regulator then also gets involved to say, hey, could you show me uh, adequate data protection uh, and data governance around how, how data is moving within the business? And when I mean data, I'm talking about metadata that may cont might contain PII, I'm talking about special characteristics type of data. I'm talking about any data that we feel is sensitive as a business and we've classified as sensitive data. If I can't, if I don't have a good answer and can't show them effective control, then we have an uncontrolled environment, which in essence indicates that we have a lack of management oversight. And there's huge ramifications from a business perspective if you've been shown to have a lack of oversight of data and information, especially PII and sensitive data and information types. What we want to move to from a CISO perspective is this controlled API ecosystem, all right? And it's really counter to everything I've mentioned in terms of the uncontrolled API ecosystem. We want to see, you know, our APIs accurately defined. We want to understand what data types are actually moving through the body of the API, for example. We want to know what resources are being called and what resources are being consumed. Uh, we want to know whether those resources or when we move data and information through the API that or connect data through the API that that um, the data that we're actually pushing uh, to a different location is stored appropriately in the right regions. OK, and we've got to extend that model beyond our own IT infrastructure. If we start to consume APIs from third parties, vendors and partners, then we need to make sure that we can control the way they are actually managing and controlling their APIs and the, the security and data privacy around that. And we have to classify those APIs in some way, shape or form as well. And I think that's where it's very useful to think about and to actually leverage 
something like an API hub or an API platform, all right? If you come from an uncontrolled environment, which most of us do, to be honest, and we need to move to a more controlled environment where we can have, actually have really great data classification, date API, a API kind of classification, then we need some catalyst to get that ball rolling. And one of the best catalysts that I know to date is to start a project around putting some sort of enterprise hub in place, okay? That forces the project teams to think about, okay, here's our single throat to choke for, and a better phrase once again. And as we start to move APIs into the hub, we can start to categorize those APIs understand and start to get an understanding of what data we're talking about, where data is moving, and then also get involved with other functions within our teams, within our business, sorry, to ensure that we have the right things in place, okay? We have the right agreements in place with partners. We have the right agreements in place with customers, okay? And we have the right agreements in place with third-party organizations that we may interface with, where we might be sharing and moving data to and from. And in doing that, what I end up with is actually a controlled API ecosystem. I know where the data is. I can communicate to our customers where the data is and where it's not. I can communicate where it's stored and I can communicate uh, to them in regards to how we manage data information through the contact, through APIs, all right? Uh, and also, once again, I can answer those same questions that a regular, regulator may have if they come and ask me questions around data, data movement across my API ecosystem. So in a nutshell, or to kind of summarize, what we're trying to do is, for, for a, from a CISO perspective, is to manage our world, all right? Um, or manage the data as it moves through these different ecosystems that we're developing. You know, we have cloud ecosystems, all right? We've gone through a process of understanding what cloud providers we're using, what data types we're actually communicating with these, with these cloud providers, what are they consuming, what are their security controls, et cetera, et cetera. The same thing has to apply with our API e ecosystem as well. What APIs are we using? Where is data going? What resources are being consumed? Do we have the legal mechanisms in place, mechanisms in place to move that data, to store that data, to work with that data, all right? So we need to wrap a process around our API management strategy that shows we have effective governance of the data and information as it moves through the API infrastructure. So once again, we need to wrap a process around it. And the central, um, or one of the uh, uh, catalysts for doing that is to think about having this single throat to choke where you actually put all your APIs into a hub. And as they go into the API, API hub, you classify those APIs, you categorize your APIs. We can identify ownership of the APIs. And in identifying ownership, we can actually look for the right kind of approvals, the documentation, legal, legal approvals to actually move that data and consume that data and information. We can understand the data types are actually passing through the APIs, um, whether it's PII, data types of special categories that might be classified, or we have to classify differently. Um, what resources we're consuming. We can also look at things like the code quality and code security. So really, when you think about API management or an API first strategy, you also have to think about information governance uh, uh, along with that strategy and how you want to be able to manage and control your APIs to prove that you actually have effective um, data governance as data moves in between and through the APIs that you're actually developing and leveraging within the services. What it does for the business, it reduces the risk exposure for a business uh, because we minimize potentially the, the data loss opportunities because we now have known resources that we're actually leveraging, known third parties, known suppliers that we're actually leveraging. We understand the security profiles of those organizations. Um, in terms of privacy, we know what data is being used within the business, who owns that data, okay? And also we know things, you know, other more tactical things in terms of things like where is the data being stored? Where is the data being processed? All right. We can show that we actually have adequate control over the data as it moves through our organization. So in essence, what we're really delivering using a hub is our first few steps in showing data control and data governance in any API first led initiative around um, application, rapid application development and deployment. So that ends my presentation. Um, 
Once again, if you have any questions and you want to delve into this a little bit deeper, or you want to have a, a conversation with myself or anyone at Rapid API, just email me at crispin at rapidapi.com and I'll respond. Um, obviously, this is a very high level uh, presentation and it's just really a little tickler for, for CISOs and data protection officers to think about uh, what they need to do in the context of an organization that they may be working in who are developing um, operational processes that interface with customers and customer data and information and how they're leveraging APIs within their organization. So once again, thanks for your time. Uh, please email me. I gave my email address just a moment ago. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and we can start to you know, unpack this a little more. All right, thank you for your time and uh, hopefully I'll speak to you later on. Take care.